Imagine being aboard the world's most advanced aircraft, floating majestically over the Atlantic. Now picture all of that transforming into an inferno of flames in just 34 seconds. This is the story of the Hindenburg, and what you're about to discover will completely change your perspective on technology, safety, and the political decisions that cost lives. Welcome to Hypertiever Tech, where we unpack the most impressive stories where technology and history meet in spectacular fashion. If you are fascinated by engineering, historical disasters, and the lessons that shaped our modern world, you are in the right place. Hit that like button and subscribe now, because this journey is going to be intense. It was May 6, 1937, and Captain Max Pruss felt the weight of responsibility on his shoulders as he watched the heavy clouds gathering over New Jersey. The Hindenburg, the pride of German engineering, floated majestically at 650 feet, 200 meters, it's 800 feet, 245 meters, of length slicing through the American sky like a flying cathedral. Inside its aluminum and fabric bowels, 7 million cubic feet of hydrogen kept the world's most advanced passenger aircraft suspended in the air. Pruss knew every inch of that extraordinary machine. The Hindenburg wasn't just an airship, it was a miracle of 1930s technology. Its four 1,200 horsepower Mercedes-Benz diesel engines could propel the gigantic structure at speeds up to 84 miles per hour, 135 kilometers per hour, crossing the Atlantic in just two and a half days, half the time required by the fastest ships of the era. Inside, passengers enjoyed unimaginable luxuries, private cabins, an elegant dining salon, and even a specially designed aluminum piano to reduce weight. But at that moment, as he approached the Lakehurst landing field, Pruss faced a dilemma every commander dreads. Weather conditions were rapidly deteriorating. Electrical storms were closing in, and the wind had shifted direction, forcing him to execute a complex S-shaped maneuver to align the airship with the mooring mast. In the auxiliary control post in the Hindenburg's tail, helmsman Helmutlau, just 25 years old, watched the landing procedures intently. Lau was one of the youngest crew members, but he had already participated in dozens of transatlantic flights. He knew every sound, every vibration of the metallic structure around him. The Hindenburg's Geraliumin framework was an engineering masterpiece, with its triangular trusses forming a complex network that distributed weight and maintained the airship's aerodynamic shape. At 7.21 p.m., 1921, the mooring lines were dropped. The ground crew ran to grab them, battling the light rain that was beginning to fall. The Hindenburg was almost home, just one more successful landing to add to its impressive safety record. In over 30 years of commercial airship flights, tens of thousands of passengers had flown over a million miles without a single injury. But at 7.25 p.m., 1925, Helmutlau heard something that would change his life forever, a muffled sound, like lighting a gas stove. Looking up, he saw a bright reflection on the forward bulkhead of gas cell number 4. The bright reflection in the cell was inside, he would later testify. I saw it through the cell. It was first red and yellow, and there was smoke in it. What happened in the next 34 seconds defied everything German engineers thought they knew about hydrogen safety. The fire spread with terrifying speed, consuming cell after gas cell. The Geraniumin structure, which had been designed to last decades, began to melt and collapse. Parts of molten aluminum and flaming fabric rained down from the sky. In the dining salon, Passengers who moments earlier were quietly watching the landing procedure were hurled against the walls as the airship's tail plummeted. Passenger Margaret Mather was thrown 13 feet, for meters, against the back wall of the dining room, pinned against a bench by several other people. Werner Franz, the cabin boy, just 14 years old, was in the officer's pantry when he felt the shock. The son of a telephone operator from Frankfurt, Werner had gotten the job on the Hindenburg to help his family financially after his father fell ill. He earned 60 Reichsmarks a month, a considerable sum for a German teenager in the 1930s. 
In that terrible moment, as the fire consumed the airship around him, Werner ran toward the exit, becoming one of the lucky few to escape the flames. Captain Ernst Learman, Director of Flight Operations for the Zeppelin Company and a veteran with over 25 years of airship experience, was on the command bridge when the disaster began. Learman had commanded the Hindenburg himself on many flights and knew every system on the airship. He had participated in Zeppelin bombing raids during World War I, he had navigated through electrical storms where St. Elmo's fire danced on the gun muzzles. But nothing had prepared him for this. Staggering away from the burning wreckage, Learman repeated to himself, in German, Das Verste he ICH nicht. Das Verste he ICH nicht, I don't understand this. I don't understand this. How was it possible that the Hindenburg, floating almost motionless in the air, had caught fire? Germans had been flying hydrogen-powered passenger airships since before World War I without a single passenger injury. The Hindenburg's technology represented the apex of aeronautical engineering in the 1930s. Its gas control systems allowed flight engineers to release hydrogen or water ballast with surgical precision to maintain the airship's balance. The radio communication system connected the cockpit with ground stations hundreds of miles away. The diesel engines, a revolutionary innovation, were safer than the gasoline engines used in smaller aircraft. But all this advanced technology could not prevent what many experts believe was an electrostatic discharge, a spark caused by the difference in electrical potential between the airship and the surrounding air. The Hindenburg was in an electrically charged atmosphere, but its metallic structure was grounded by the mooring line. This difference in potential likely caused a spark that jumped from the airship's fabric coating to its metallic frame. Hydrogen, although highly flammable, burns with an almost invisible flame. The dramatic orange flames captured in the photographs and films were primarily from the burning fabric and other structural materials, not just the hydrogen. But once started, the fire spread with devastating speed through the airship's 16 gas cells. In just half a minute, the pride of German aviation had turned into a pile of smoking wreckage. 35 people died on that New Jersey field, 13 passengers, 22 crew members, and one member of the ground crew. Among the dead was Captain Learman himself, who succumbed to his injuries the next day, taking decades of airship knowledge with him. The Hindenburg disaster was not just a human tragedy, it was the end of an era. Public confidence in passenger airships was instantly destroyed. The golden age of the Zeppelins, which had begun with Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin's LZ-1 in 1900, came to an end in those terrifying 34 seconds over Lakehurst. The cruel irony is that the Hindenburg had originally been designed to use helium, a non-flammable gas. But political tensions between Nazi Germany and the United States, which controlled most of the world's helium supply, forced the Germans to use hydrogen. If the American helium embargo had not existed, the Hindenburg could have landed safely that May night, and the history of aviation might have been completely different. Today, when we see modern advertising blimps floating over sports stadiums, they are inflated with safe helium. Hydrogen technology, ironically, has found new life in the hydrogen fuel cells that power modern zero-emission vehicles. Advances in engineering, safety standards, and material science have addressed the challenges of safely storing and handling hydrogen. But on that fateful night in 1937, as the flames consumed the world's last great passenger airship, an era came to an end. The dream of traveling the skies in flying palaces died with the Hindenburg, leaving behind only the memory of magnificent technology that was destroyed in a moment of absolute terror. So, did this story impact you as much as it impacted me? The Hindenburg teaches us that even the most advanced technology can fail when political and economic decisions override safety. 35 lives were lost, and an entire era of aviation ended in 34 seconds. But here at Hypertiver Tech, we don't stop there. We have dozens of equally fascinating stories waiting for you, 
From the Titanic and the Bismarck to other moments where technology changed the course of history in ways you never imagined. If you want to continue this journey with us, subscribe to the channel now and hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode. Leave a like if this story moved you, and in the comments, tell me, what historical disaster do you want us to explore next? This is Hyperteaver Tech, where technology and history meet in the most spectacular ways. We'll see you in the next video.